ever had your power go out at the worst possible moment? Like right as the game's on the line or in the middle of cooking a big dinner. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, it's the worst. Well, imagine that feeling, but for an entire country. Wow. We're diving into Cuba's nationwide blackout, and let me tell you, the details are pretty startling. We've been digging through news reports, both in Spanish and English, to give you the full picture. It makes sense. So picture this. Families all across Cuba, gathered around candles, their routines totally upended. It's incredible to see how they're adapting. One article even mentioned that airports are still operational, running on backup generators. I... Talk about resourceful. That's wild, but it sounds like this is a pretty massive situation. Absolutely. It really underscores how vital a reliable power grid is. It does make you realize just how fragile things can be. And in Cuba's case, the root of the problem seems to be this power plant, the Antonio Guterres plant. It failed and basically took their whole grid down with it. Right, it cascaded like dominoes. Their system just wasn't built to withstand a failure of that magnitude, I guess. So this Antonio Guterres power plant, it sounds like the linchpin. The whole system hinges on this one place. What makes it so important? Well, it's their biggest, most efficient power plant. When that one goes offline, it's a huge loss, not just a blip on the radar. The whole grid's crippled. Pretty much. Yeah. The other plants, they can't pick up the slack, not even close. And that's where this fuel shortage comes in. Right. The government's blaming the blackout on a lack of fuel. And it sounds like it's been a long time coming. Yeah, they've been stretched thin for a while, just trying to keep the lights on, you know. Mm -hmm. But the fuel shortage itself is really just a symptom of a much bigger issue. Which it was Cuba's economy. Yeah. They've been struggling. And the U.S. trade embargo definitely hasn't helped. Right. Makes it a lot harder to get the supplies they need. Exactly. And on top of that, you've got some internal challenges too, inefficiencies. And then you throw in those pre-existing issues with their infrastructure. It's a recipe for, well, for what we're seeing now. Yeah. A total system overload. Although one article did mention that the government's expecting a new shipment of fuel soon. That's good news. If it happens. Yeah. But it begs the question... Is that going to be enough to really get them back on track? Or is it just a temporary fix? Like putting a Band-Aid on a broken bone. Pretty much. And speaking of tough situations, it really makes you think about the people in Cuba right now. I mean, it's one thing to talk about power grids and economics, but what's it actually like for them on the ground? It's easy to get caught up in the technical stuff, but yeah, the human cost of this blackout, that's what really hits home. What are people actually experiencing right now in Cuba? It's like stepping back in time, almost. One article I read, it talked about a musician practicing by candlelight because that was the only light he had. Wow. No refrigerators, so food's going bad. And forget internet access, it's basically non-existent. It really makes you appreciate the things we take for granted. Yeah, for sure. And it sounds like the government is really scrambling to regain some sense of control. Closing schools, restricting workplaces, even rationing cooking gas. It's a desperate attempt to lower energy consumption, that's for sure. Mm. They're trying to avert a complete meltdown, but it's a short-term fix. Yeah. I mean, how long can they realistically keep schools and businesses closed? The impact on their economy could be devastating. It's like they're trying to hold back a tidal wave. Mm. And another thing that caught my eye, they're getting stricter about energy use in the private sector. Oh, yeah. One article I saw mentioned that new businesses are basically being told you're on your own when it comes to power. Right. Fend for yourselves. It's a way to take the pressure off the national grid, sure. Yeah. But it could really stifle entrepreneurship. Absolutely. It makes you wonder what this means for Cuba's economic future. Is this blackout just a bump in the road? Or is it going to force some kind of major shift in how they handle energy, how they attract investment, everything? It's a huge question mark. And it really highlights how interconnected everything is. Energy, economics, daily life. It all ties together. Exactly. And this blackout, it's like it's pulled back the curtain on all of that, all of Cuba's complexities. So if you're listening to this right now, don't let the conversation end here. This is a story that's still being written. Keep asking those questions, keep learning, and let's see how this unfolds.